Hi guys, in this video we're going to look into how to use kind of Photoshop basically for texturing. Um, so you are going to be limited here by um, your skills in Photoshop somewhat. So if you're awesome at 2D painting, if you've been using Photoshop for years, you might find this a little bit trickier. Um, I'm going to show you kind of a few ways that we can um, get a few tricks um, to make our texture files look awesome. Okay, so um, we could start painting this right now um, using our brushes over here. Um, so if I just choose a brush setup, let's just get a general brush from here and hard round brush. Okay, awesome. So I could, just increasing the size here, um, I could choose my brush, choose my color, and I could start painting um, the base color for my spaceship here. Okay, I could fill this around. I'm focusing on kind of one part at the moment. Um, and then I could look at perhaps where I could hop back over to Maya, have a little look at what faces I'm selecting. So this round, this side. So this is the side. So I could do um, some fairly nice sort of techniques. I could look at this, the, these side faces down here and I could paint these maybe a slightly darker purple. Now, okay, I'm not being too rough, uh, too careful at the moment. You might want to be a little bit more careful. Um, so what I've got now is I've got the sides are a little darker and then this part here, which I think is the underneath, I could make even darker again. And then the top, I could leave that little bit lighter. Okay. Um, I would then maybe tidy this up by zooming in and using the... Um, oops, I lost my thing there. My scroll wheel isn't working nicely. Um, using the kind of the squares themselves. Okay. If this maybe isn't the way you want to texture, you don't want to use brushes to texture your stuff, um, then we can use a different method. So I'm going to make a new layer here now, and we could actually go to the internet and we could find um, some texture files. So if we just search spaceship textures, there are a number of different um, websites that you can use to find textures. Um, I'm going to use this one here. So this is a nice um, repeatable background um, texture, which means it's going to tile. So if I copy this and then I hop into Photoshop and I zoom out, whoops, my mouse wheel isn't working very well. Move this mouse. I can paste this here, Control T to put that in, let's scale that down. So now I've got this layer here that I can start to duplicate and it should tile perfectly. So let's copy that layer, paste that layer, paste that layer. So I'm putting it over the whole model at the moment. I've now got a texture that runs across the whole model here. And um, I'm just going to merge all those layers together. So those are just one layer there now. Right click, scroll down, and merge those layers. So I've now got one layer there. And just for now, I'm just going to turn the opacity down a little bit. Not quite a lot, actually. And so now what we could do is we can start looking at where, I'm gonna use this magic wand tool over here. I'm gonna to go to my UV layer and I'm gonna select. So this is sampling all layers. I don't want it to use all layers. There we go. So what I've done now is I've hopped to this layer and I've selected the outside. Um, I can select and I can edit selection, so transform selection. No, that's not what I want. Control D to unselect, select there, select modify, and I can contract my selection. So I'm gonna contract my selection by about four pixels. And what this has done now is it's actually given me 
a little bit more space. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop over to this layer and then I'm going to press delete. And what this has given me now is it's given me a little bit of bleed. Okay, sometimes if you do things perfect with the magic wand, then um, you um, it runs the risk of giving you little white lines on your models. Okay, so now if I again zoom out a little bit and um, cool. Yep, I'm going to take this opacity back up now and press Control D. So now you can see I've just got this texture kind of where I want it to be. Um, awesome. So I'm just going to hide that for a, sec a second um, and go here. Now, I've got these windows here, so I want these windows to be slightly different. So I'm going to make a new layer. This is going to be my windows. I might want to name this one uh, Base Metal. OK, so now I've got this layer here. This is going to be for my windows just name that one as well. So I'm going to select here and then I'm going to shift select all of the faces that are windows. And there. Um, now I'm going to do the same thing again. So I am going to go to select, modify. This time I want to expand it. I want to make the selection just that little bit bigger. Um, I don't want it to be very much at all. I'm going to do one pixel. OK, so what that's done there is um, if you just take a little look, um, you can see here it's not quite gone over those. So if I again redo that, it's now just made that that little bit bigger. So now I can then hop to my windows layer over there and then I could I could look for a, a glass texture to use. Um, for the time being, though, I'm just going to use a color. Maybe let's have like a nice kind of sort of orange color. That might be quite cool. So now I can zoom out. And now I'm just painting in those selections so I can be a little bit kind of rougher there now. OK, awesome. Um, so now let's bring back our base mesh. So now I've got a fairly simple texture here. Now we can do some slightly more advanced things by um, going to this base metal here and I can um, go up to image and adjustments and what I can do with this is um, well I can change a, a range of things I can go to color balance I could maybe start playing around with the color that already exists in this this isn't seeming to do too much it's not the one I was looking for uh, ah, hue okay so now this should start to tint my model a little bit right so this because I've got a selection so I had a had a selection over here which wasn't wasn't what I wanted so be careful of that control D to do that so again hue slash saturation I should now be able to okay so now I've got a slight yellow tint here um image adjustments levels so levels is really good for I can darken or I can lighten certain areas. So again, I'm not just using those base textures that I've got there. So there's a range of other adjustments up here that you could use. You could black and white, you could invert, um, add gradient maps, you could look at the shadows and the highlights, you could look at how exposed it is. Um, there's a lot of different kind of adjustments you can make with the kind of the color values and the light values in here. We also have filter up here so we can use filter there's a range of different filters so we've got distortion filters um, we've got blurs we can use we can pixelate so if we try um, crystallize on this one here you can see that this is crystallizing I'm ending up with a more kind of camouflage type texture so I've used an image here to make my own texture I actually quite like that it looks like kind of camo so I think I'm gonna gonna run with that now Okay, so you could go further and further with this. I could look at putting highlights in here. So I could make a new layer for my windows. I could go to highlights. I could take the brush size down. And I could start painting some white highlights in here. Obviously, you'd take a little bit more care with this. You'd maybe choose your selection in your UV map there. Um, I have up here blending modes. So if I 
lighten this and then take the opacity down slightly. It can let them blend in a little bit further there. And then I could also look at, let's add a stripe to this now. So if I choose red, I'm going to add a red stripe. I'm going to up my size here. I am going to click here. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click over here. So I've added a stripe over my model. Now this kind of stands out a lot. So again, I'm going to change the blending mode here to multiply. And what this has done is it's actually made it multiply in there a little bit more. So you could do this with images. You could go up here. You could look for rust textures. So you could grab some rust and then you could uh, make it look like part of the spaceship is rust, rusty there. You could uh, multiply that layer in. Okay. Um, finally, let's say my texture's finished now. So what I would do um, is I would save this. So I'm first going to save this as a, a PSD file, which is like a Photoshop working file. So I'm going to call this spaceship texture. Okay, um, but I am also going to turn off my UVs now, so I've not got those lines on here, and I am going to file, save scene as, and this time I'm going to change it to a, well we can change it to anything, we can use a bump map, I like to use PNGs, um, so these are these hold transparency tiffs are good as well and targers are good um, let's stick with a let's stick with a png here so i'm going to export this as a png so what the png file won't have is all of the the layers over here which that's why i've saved it as a psd um, so the png will be just my file that i'm going to put onto my model there so i'll hit save and that's now done Okay, in the next video, we'll look how to bring this into Maya and apply this to our spaceship. Um, in this video, we have covered actually painting our model. Okay, but obviously it's up to you guys how you want to paint your model and what methods that you want to use. Okay, thank you very much.